All right, hey everyone. This is Bruja del 69 back at it again with another reading. This one is by, I keep forgetting to look up the person who request the reading, um, but this was requested. It was by a person, shout out to you. I will do better at making sure I check the name so I can give you a proper shout out. But um, thank you so much for always engaging. Um, for those that engage and like request readings, I feel so um, excited and like it, 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 gets, it gives me motivation to like really do this shit. And um, so I'm very thankful, like y'all are the people. This is the reason why I do, I do things and I deliver. It's because um, y'all give me motivation. Um, so I was asked to do a Juice World reading and this is probably already like four days now. Uh, yeah, four or five days. Um, the reason why it's take, it took this long to deliver was because this is such an intense topic. Like I didn't know much about Juice World prior to this. Um, my partner likes his songs and when I met him in 2019 um he was very much that was probably one of his favorite artists um but that's as close as I knew about Joe's World um I remember I did like my partner was sad over his death you know his daughter was sad over his death um but to me I was just like well I'm not like I don't listen to his music I don't really follow him so it really didn't hit me so guess what y'all I feel like I know the kid. I feel like I know him. And doing my research, I was able to have more of a feeling of who he's about. And oh my goodness, I'm just so sad. I'm, I've been so sad these days because I'm an empath. One, I'm an empath. So I feel and can put myself in people's shoes. I can look at someone, I can see a situation and kind of like uh, be able to feel what the other person is feeling so like while watching the documentary on youtube um that came out on hb hbo max like that made me feel some like a lot of feelings like you know and i had lots of questions so juice world who is he his name is jared jared anthony higgins he was born on december 2nd 1998 and died December 8, 2019. He had turned 21 years old, six days prior to his death. He was a artist, a very creative artist. Um, it is known for a fact by his um, management team. He was signed under Grade A Productions. Um, through a partnership with Columbia. So Columbia slash Grade A Productions um, partnered up to manage him. And under Bibby, Lil Bibby was the person that signed him and found him. He says that he left him with 3,000 plus songs recorded. Songs that um, this guy's work ethic for someone that was 19 when he came into the game and left two years later, he has 3,000 songs in those two years. That's what he was able to do. He is from Chicago. Um, he grew up in a single parent household. It's okay. In a single parent household, Oh my goodness, my dogs are having a my dog's having a nightmare. Hold on. What happened? Who is having a nightmare? So he was born um in a single parent household, um, raised by his mother and grew up in a suburban area. In his early childhood, um, when he was in fifth grade, he was prescribed Adderall um, and was diagnosed with 
attention deficit hyperactive disorder, ADHD. That was his introduction to what would be um, drugs, you know. He didn't like Adderall and stood by it um, growing up. But that got him into exploring other drugs. So it is said that I don't. Um, he started experimenting with lean when he was like thirteen. By the age, uh, by the time he got to high school, he started um, experimenting with pills, like Percocets and stuff like that, and oxycodone. Um. So. He's making music. His music is heavily, heavily about drug use, about depression, about anxiety, about mental health. So the impact that he has left on people is that he was someone that was open to talking about mental health and like your demons and like not being okay. And he has left that left that impact of like being open with those topics that not many people are open about like your emotions you know your dark emotions and that's what people liked about him that was his pull um okay so there's many questions there's um Specifically, the person that requested this reading wants to know what is the role of his girlfriend at the time into his death because he ended up meeting a woman at the time that he was 19. She was 25. Her real name is Alicia Leon, but she goes by Ali Lottie. This woman is um, was born in Alabama. No. She was born... I forgot where. I forgot where she was born. I don't know if it was Alabama. It was one of like, it was a state. I don't know because it was this state. So she moves to Alabama. Um, to another state by herself. And like she's a Gemini. So she's just like trying to figure out her path. She's trying a lot of things. Like she... Was she from Chicago? So she um, dabbled with like warehouse um, raves. She would, you know, organize these events, call people up, you know, just have these events. And it is alleg allegedly she even sold drugs to people there. So she moved to Alabama away from you know, her hometown, and it was a few states away, and she worked as a stripper. Um, she's in an interview with No Jumper. She mentions that she was able to make connections with people and went to tours with other artists and, like, was able to kind of just get to know areas around the United States that way. Now, this woman was 25 years old when she, um, when she contacted Juice World through a Instagram DM. Juice World at the time had another girlfriend. According to that ex the other girlfriend, um, she basically, Ali Lottie interfered with their relationship because according to her, um, she basically hit him up to sell him drugs. According to Ali Lottie, she said she hit him up to applaud him for his music and that she knew he was going to be an upcoming artist who was saying the truth. Um, also... Ellie Lottie has a criminal history of um, smuggling, smuggling drugs across countries. Yeah. According to her, prior to Juice World, she never left the country and she was only traveling or only um, locally. 
there's a lot of like um questions surrounding her right so people are interested in knowing like what was her role in his death was she really um the person that he needed what was her intention like did she really love him did she want to use him because he was rising to fame um so that's something that we're going to talk about for sure and hit deeper into also there's other people who are like yeah his team um might have set him up because the day that he died um they were going on tour no 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 i'm sorry they were going from LA to Chicago and they were going to, that was the week that Juice World had turned 21. So they were, he had plans to like celebrate and go hard in Chicago. Well, they caught a flight, um, a private jet and there were 70 pounds of marijuana that were found in their luggages. No one um, had, the luggages didn't personally get tracked down to anyone that was in the jet there so we, we, there's questions questions surrounding who was he moving these drugs for because they were basically like this is a dumb move he's so famous he's very he's making music like there's no need for him to be moving drugs at this point and it's not a good move because apparently prior to that uh to that time a month prior they had already checked his um his private jet again um so there's questions around why were there 70 pounds of drugs or 70 70 pounds of weed so my question is was it for personal use or was it for someone else was it for um their you know could it have been that it was for his girlfriend who was already in the drug industry or like drug trafficking and who even after his death, she says she's legally selling drugs now because she's growing like weed or whatever. So I'm just like, hmm, like, you know, trying to put two and two together. Um, so what was the cause of his death? It is said that he was intoxicated. Well, he had an overdose. He had codeine, which is like lean, and Percocets. So, in the in the interview or the documentary on HBO and YouTube, the night that he died, um, at that point he wasn't supposed to like a he wasn't supposed to be drinking lean at that point. Like, you know, it's something that he he and his girlfriend had agreed that, you know, it wasn't allowed, that he couldn't drink it. So at that point, he was drinking lean behind her back and was hiding it in um, his videographer's room who lived with them. You know, he lived with his team, you know, in different rooms. And so his videographer would you know, hold his lean for him or other people would like, like would try to sneak lean to him. And so there's questions around like, why were they doing things like that? Like, did they want him to die, blah, blah, blah. And so that night, the videographer was like, I had a pint of lean that I was holding for him in my room. And that night I didn't find it. So he ended up taking that whole lean, probably taking the whole pint of lean with him and taking it plus some pills and that mixture just got him to cause him to have a seizure and die at the airport once they landed to Chicago. Some people were like, oh, he probably didn't want to face jail time and he ended up overdosing on purpose at the airport. What is the story? Was he already overdosing? prior to realizing that the cops were there or was it an after thing, All right? It's pretty, pretty tough. Um, so I'm going to start with, um, what is Juice World about? You know, the, the I have a summary of what he's about. Like I have an idea based on like the, the like many footage that I've seen online. 
Like I went in deep on on YouTube. I I like listened to his freestyles. I saw the whole documentary. I saw his interviews. Like this, essentially, he was a boy. You know, he loved. You know, he loved anime. Like he kind of reminds me of like a. I don't want to put labels, but if you want to put like a label for you to get an idea of what he was, kind of like a nerd like a rocker nerd and you add a little bit of hip-hop to that you know he his genre of music was like emo rap so like he was very in what is it called when you like like he's a visionary like he just changed the game and like really created a very nice genre where he combined worlds like from the from the emo you know emo punk to like rap and put created emo rap and and just excelled in it like he really had a he was able to do that should i accept this well i haven't even asked so i'm gonna start over again let me just go ahead and um, so what is he about? 12 to 98. I want to go ahead and say what is his life path number? So if I go 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 9 plus 9 plus 8. That's 6. 18 would be 24 plus 8 would be 32 3 plus 2 would be 5 okay his life path number is a 5 I'm gonna go ahead and look at what the life path number means in a bit I do have the page the book there and so, um, I hope this is a great reading. Like, honestly, I was, I was saying that I'm like an empath, right? And like, I just felt the heaviness of this topic and just like researching, I just felt myself like I was honestly, like it got me in a funk. I'm not going to lie. Like it got me in a funk and I'm just like, you know what? Like I need to let go of it. Like I need to let go and start researching because the more I do, I'm the more I'm just going into a rabbit hole and yeah i started feeling confused and just kind of like um depressed and like yeah myself so i'm just like no i can't i need to just do a reading and let it go and like kind of just uh, move on so what is he about like what is he about he's a sagittarius Oh, he has a vision. He had a vision. Um, it's called Sage of Wands here. It says uh, the seer. They have a keen eye for um, the future. They're able to, you know, there is this time where in one of his interviews, they were like, um, they're asking Juice, like, how are you able to just flow and keep on freestyling? Like, he's so good at freestyling. Like, he'll freestyle for hours, right? Like the, there is this one video where he freestyled for an hour. Like, have you heard of anyone who could just keep on flowing? Um, no pre-recorded, nothing. And, you know, just vibe with the beat for an hour and not get stuck. Like that was him. Um, he was able to make music in four minutes. Like he was able to make a whole song in four minutes. Most of his songs that he dropped was freestyled. You know, he didn't have to write them down. He was just flowing with the beat. He said um, in the interview that he basically is able to kind of like see. It comes to him before even like a vision. It comes to him like he's able to just kind of visualize. And it, he's just kind of just spitting it. He had a keen eye for that. He had um, this talent of just like almost like a sidekick. Almost like just... Um, being able to know before actually knowing. 
he's definitely someone with so much wisdom And I'm thinking, like, he was a Sagittarius. Um, Sagittarius are very unconventional people. Very, like, they don't give a fuck what you think about them. Like, they'll express themselves however you want, however they want. Um, they'll clothe themselves however they want. Um, um, there's, like, this interview that his manager, like, his, basically, the la the record label manager little baby was like oh yeah um the one of the first times that we went to go um and meet what's and have like a little business meeting or like whatever he shows up with a leather jacket no shirt no shirt underneath and like a choker and basically like he doesn't care about what other people think he's a free spirit he's gonna do whatever he wants to do he is um not contained by anything not contained by no one's expectations and standards um he's not confined he's free he's free to be himself and he is unapologetically himself um that's why he had an addiction to drugs and he didn't care who saw who saw him that way like he didn't care he was like i'm doing me like i'm gonna go ahead and i love my drugs and it is what it is um a lot of people were have been asking like why didn't the team do this why didn't the team do that but you have to understand that when you are someone who who doesn't care about what other people think like you're a free spirit um you're gonna do what you want to do there is no one in the world that can tell you oh do this and do that and expect them to listen like their team um in the end of the day like he has he has he's gonna do what he wants to do if he wants to do drugs he's gonna do it like he's a free spirit okay what is what else is he about what else is Jer juice world jared anthony higgins about lord jesus he had so much sorrow he was having battling with mental had had mental wars in his mind this for some reason he just had pain like he he couldn't he couldn't bear pain like He was out of this world. He didn't understand why things were the way they were. Why people are the way they are. He was hurt. He was hurt by many occasions. And he couldn't let go of the pain. He couldn't let go of the pain. It would haunt him. Um, his from like... harmony reversed so these are all the cards that fell out together so i'll just read them together um he wasn't in harmony he didn't have inner peace he had self-esteem issues like sometimes he felt worthless like he didn't deserve the things that were coming for him sometimes he didn't believe it even though the reality was like he had so much potential like the world could have been his but there is demons i'm telling you there's demons like there's demons did y'all hear that fuck <laughs> i'm telling you like this is not this is not a joke there is a spiritual warfare going on and it's going all around you even you like you need to protect yourself from from you know the negativity from like 
things that don't serve us. Like we have to protect our life. Oh, shit. And I'm going to go ahead and sage because like I was saying, I'm an empath. I get this information and downloads. So sometimes you might be looking or being like, where the F does she get her information from? I'm able to see and read and like just by looking at facial expressions, just by like being able to just observe, I'm able to see. I get these ideas, I get these thoughts and I'm just like, sometimes when growing up, I'd be like, are these assumptions that I'm making? But a lot of the times I'm like correct when it comes to like when I get these downloads and he masked his pain a lot. He masked his pain a lot, but his world was dark. His world was very dark and he he showed it in the in the in his songs like the universe is reversed how is it that he has so much sorrow and then illumination reversed like so much blockages of like light light blocking his light was being blocked his light was being blocked and he couldn't get out of it he couldn't fight the dark he couldn't um he didn't he wasn't able to see a way out because he was in it. He was in the dark. There was, it was a spiritual warfare. Like his demons were not allowing him to better himself and better his life. It was hard to be like in that space of gratitude and to feel like happy because of his mental health. He was going through lots of mental health and that's one way that we in the world describe like when we're, um, that's a scientific term to describe, you know, like when we're battling like spiritual shit, like demons. We gotta understand like we live in a world where to a certain degree, we don't we don't talk about the spiritual realm and how people can get spiritually attacked. That's how people are either good or bad or like, and it's not just a black and white thing, right? Like not everyone is gonna be completely good. Not everyone's gonna be completely bad. There's good in the bad and bad in the good, but someone has a decision to act in a certain way so a good person can decide to be bad and a bad person can decide to be good you know all at the same time so there are energies out there that are trying to sway you that are trying to feed on your energy that want to be you and are jealous of our light that they'll do anything to this to like get you to be on your lowest and i'm not talking about um people i'm talking about energies or like pe spiritually there's spiritual warf warfare going on and these energies they attach themselves to vulnerable groups uh, children empaths people susceptible to depression and anxiety, they attach themselves to them. Um, it makes the world darker. And so when we go to the doctors and we say, oh, I'm feeling like this, this and that, they never say, oh, you need peace. You need, you know, you need to pray. You need to kind of like go back into um, and claim your light, blah, blah, blah. No, they say, drink this, take these pills. You're chemically imbalanced. Um, we're, we'll do, we'll, you know, like we'll help you just treat, just, um, uh, take these drugs. So mental health issues sometimes have a deeper root and it's more than that. It's the fact that there's something negative surrounding you that you're trying to free yourself from. I, I know this, I deal with it all the time. Like I'm a very happy go lucky person but I am an empath, so I still haven't mastered my 
how to protect myself. I still haven't mastered like energetically how to protect myself so that I get overwhelmed very easily. And as you listen, like being very, like even this whole reading, I was just like scared to, to do so because it's just a very do deep topic. In confirmation, my dishes moved or like when I had said the word demon, like this is not a fucking joke. Like it's crazy. <clears throat> So I was like, hell no, I'm saging. His world was very dark. He was battling lots with a lot. Can we, can we please? Oh, fuck. Look at that devil's play. You see, okay, so there's two ways to say that, you know, devil's play. One way is that he likes to have fun. And yes, he loves to have fun in the sense that he, um, when he felt good, on the days that he felt good, he would want people around him, would love to like celebrate with his people, um, you know, playing video games, you know, doing his drugs, um, freestyling, like people, his friends would say that. So he had a couple of friends that he would continually hang out with. One was like, his name was Ski Mask Slum Dog. Ski Mask Slum Dog, Slum God, something like that. Ski Mask Slum God or Slum the God. The other one was, um, he is another rapper who when seeing their interaction was like they were basically the same person in two different bodies like he was also like a little nerd you know a rapper he's Jamaican he's young and they're able to just kind of they had this connection like they were able to just have fun and laugh and like this was literally them together like this is literally him and um juice and ski mask he also had G Herbal around him. G Herbal was a, a friend of Jules World. Um, he had Kid Leroy around as well. In addition to his team, he had a cousin. I forgot what his cousin's name was. Um, he had a cousin always with him too. His his girlfriend, right? Ali Lottie was always there. So when he was, you know, feeling his best self, because once in a while you get out of that funk, he loved socializing. He he wanted people to be there with him at all times, to be honest, at all times. Um, and his girlfriend, Ali Lottie, was actually saying that he was, uh, he couldn't be single to if he even, if his life depended, like this, he was afraid to be alone. The four of wands. His he has lot he had a lot of aspiration, but there was blockages. There is a lot of blockages. Okay, so the other translation to this card is that a lot of his um in his struggle was devil's play, meaning that the devil was behind it. He's someone who's very artistic. But this is where, where why things are rever reversed. Like, when the devil was at play, his aspirations were gone. His art was suffering. His world was crashing down. So what these cards are showing me are what happens when the devil's at play. He has no hope. He cannot enjoy doing the things he likes to do. And so Lil Bibby was saying in his interview that there was moments where he just wanted to be alone and in his room. He did not like um, coming out. He didn't like going out. He liked, pe he liked people to come to him, into his house, 
he didn't like to go out he was a homebody and i think i think that that also stems from social anxiety in a way i see him as scared to face the world literally that he kind of like only left whenever he had to because of business So he was good at, you know, even his girlfriend was like, wow, even when you are not performing, you still play an act, like you're entertaining. He made sure that others enjoyed his presence, but there was times where the negativity took over and he switched to a different person. Um, there was a little baby was saying that one time, and this was a little prior to his death, um, Juice World would call him while he's on tour and be like, come out, you know, come out to my show, come out. Little Baby's in LA, um, Juice World is in New York at that time. And he's like urging him six different days to come to his tour or to come along and to see his show. He's telling him that he misses the, the old days when he would be more involved, I guess, right? So Lil Bibby, what does he do? He hops on a plane and goes to New York. And then he goes to Juice World's hotel to, and Juice World is isolating himself. He goes into his suite and Juice World locks himself in the room. And he's, the negativity goes out, like runs it it overpowers him to the point where like the to the point where his passion is gone his passion is gone if you he's not he's he comp, he's a complete different person he's not that entertainer anymore he's not that person that it's fun to be around it's kind of like he lo he lost all of his personality and so little baby was like man he's like i really don't want to because like you know hang around you because you start acting different um so little baby himself says he doesn't um condone drugs and doesn't doesn't do drugs so he was saying at the beginning uh when he was hanging out hanging out around him he noticed that juice world would take a percocet and he would take one and a half he said most of his friends um little baby's friends takes half a percocet at a time juice world was take his dosage was one and a half little baby was saying that um at the end of by the time that like later on he started he realized or he was informed that he started taking Jules were started taking four percocets at a time and then he was like but i found out that a little before his death he was taking more than that in the documentary um it had said that he was taking like 20 plus pills a day a little baby before his um, Jules World's death, wanted to intervene and told him, "You need to go and check in into a rehab. You need." And it was going to happen, only that it just they didn't have a the opportunity to. Um, But it was already it was already in the works. It was already in the works. Um, he was already, you know, it was a plan, but it just didn't happen. So sometimes he could be a hermit. Sometimes he can't. Sometimes he was in and out of this like I'm social. I'm a hermit. You know. Um. So his drug addiction was really really bad. But also. Lil Bibi was saying he didn't, um, Juice World didn't like to, or didn't show him that side often because he knew that Lil Bibi's stance on drugs, 
he knew that little baby didn't understand why are people taking drugs like he didn't understand and so I, this is my my in, my take this is not coming from the readings but when i saw like interactions between juice world and little bibby it seemed like little bibby cares about him to be honest little bibby sees him as his son there's many times where on the documentary he's like i felt like i lost my son and then on the vlad interview hey stop it please on the interview he was like oh you know um my son or he was like little bro he you know he called him that and so he little baby's a cancer cancers are nurturing cancers are very um they get attached to people especially if we like someone like our friends are family like we don't think oh they're friends no they're family we treat them as family so he under he undertook this 19 year old um and basically wanted to guide him like he signed up to be basically like his father and so Jules Road hid things from him in the sense that he didn't want he sought approval but also it hurt him that little baby would joke with him and he didn't take it as that you know it Jules Road like he's um was sensitive when it comes to like people um like little baby because there was this one time this interview i don't i don't know what it was but i just saw um little baby had made a comment and I think it was sort of like playing, playing, being like a playful joke towards Juice World, and Juice World looked at him and like, it was a smile that just disappeared, and then you know, so it's just kind of like Juice World had like a love hate relationship with Little Baby in the sense that he. As appreciative of him he he looked up to him he like but his comments like little baby was sometimes offensive when it came to him joking around his mental health his drug addiction calling it weird and stuff like that like he took it at heart and so he was very protective of his energy and like there was times where he's like looking out or like um trying to call for little baby but then once little baby comes and tries to see him you know he's going through different waves of emotions and then his negativity goes over and he's like at that point i think that he's doesn't want little baby to see how much how of a hot mess he is whether he is taking drugs whether he's going through withdrawals and he ends up trying to give him a cold sh shoulder and just secludes himself in the room instead so i think that was my take that was my take so what else what else do you want to let's take like three more cards oh lord just, let me just... Shh. hey stop be good so this is actually running really long so i'm gonna cut this into a part one and cut it off in a bit commencement again commencement okay can we clarify commencement astro can we clarify commencement he faced lots of setbacks something about completion like he couldn't complete something okay can we clarify commencement? Can we clarify? Oh. Oppression reversed. Yeah, there's just so much darkness going on here. Like, It's like he kind of wanted to end it. He wanted to end 
all of this. He didn't want to feel this anymore. And he was looking for the end of it. Like he literally was like, what can I do to stop? What can I do to stop feeling like this? He didn't see any other way out. He didn't know how to free himself other than what he then just relying on his drugs. Um, Astro. Oh, Lord. Yeah. And so that just led him to um, a path of destruction. Even though he had so much going for him, like he had money, he had riches, like it was not enough. Because spiritually, he wasn't fulfilled. He wasn't fulfilled. Um, Astro. So uh, I am going, I have like lots of dogs in my kitchen. I'm going to go ahead and pause this and end it. This will be part one. And go ahead and um, look for part two. Okay.